Please subscribe Sporta TV for more information, MotoGP and Formula 1 2024. As always after each Grand Prix Gigi Daligna outlined his review of the Australian Grand Prix on LinkedIn. The general manager of Ducati course paid tribute to Marquez's class, but he also interpreted the thoughts of the two title contenders, Jorge Martin and Peko Banyaya, not forgetting to mention Di Gian Antonio's excellent race. 16th win of the season. Six of our bikes in the top six positions, another historic first to celebrate together. Another wonderful opportunity to thank all those who make up the great Ducati course family. An awesome Mark Marquez bags his third 2024 success to reaffirm, as if needed, that he is very much there, back at the top of MotoGP. And he does it in his inimitable way following an unbelievable comeback that took him immediately, and with disarming authority, close to the leaders and then on to the nail-biting duel with Martin. A true masterpiece on a track most congenial to him. He went wild, as he does when he can send victory, sparing himself nothing. Irrepressible. But the true measure of his strength, his specific weight, is all in his having immediately recovered from a very unlucky start, imposing himself over everything and everyone as the winner takes all. Even over a Martin who, truth be told, had undoubtedly more to lose than Marquez. Still, Jorge tried to prevail, with great merit but not at all costs, he got off to a good start and stayed there at the front until the last laps, not backing down when it was time to engage in a gripping fight with Mark, but giving due consideration, after having given everything, to the possibility of gaining points that were most important. Fast and with the right maturity, he thus moves up to plus 20 on Peko. A Peko who experienced a rather lackluster weekend, always missing something on a track that is hostile to him, having never really found a feeling with either bike or track. Everything was also conditioned by Friday's weather. Conditions that prevented him from carrying out tests that had been planned to optimize setup on a track characterized by new tarmac, and to metabolize the automatisms he needs to best express himself. He raced defensively putting his all into it, fighting with the leaders as long as he could and then gradually losing ground, especially in the last part of the race. But it is precisely in these situations that the traits of a fighter come to the fore, of one who manages to limit the damage even when everything seems to conjure against him. He did very well, seizing an important podium, even though more could really not have been done today, he still wanted to have his say, he was there with the front runners ready to challenge for it. Special kudos to Digia's great race, may it also bode well for what he has to face. An excellent performance, starting from the 12th grid position, he closed with a promising 4th place. In the leading group of contenders, fast and tenacious, with a better qualification, who can say? I remember him here last year with his first podium in Premier Class. Just enough time to muse on the race in Australia, and it's already time to think of the Thai tarmac, another page to be written, anticipating a finale to be savoured. With three rounds left in the 2024 MotoGP season, Jorge Martin leads Peko Banyaya by 20 points in the standings after the Australian Grand Prix. Banyaya has won more races than Martin on Sundays, with eight victories putting the former on a par with the likes of Marc Marquez, Valentino Rossi and Jorge Lorenzo for achieving something similar in a single season. Martin has only won three Grands Prix, and yet is 20 points clear in the championship. A big factor behind this is the seven DNFs that Banyaya has registered in the 2024 campaign. Peko is no stranger to overcoming a high rate of non-scores to win titles. In 2022, he came from 91 points back at the halfway mark to beat a struggling Fabio Cordero on the Yamaha having suffered five non-scores. In 2023, he tallied up the same number of pointless races but still came out on top against Martin. 7 is a new high for Banyaya and it's come against a rival in Martin whose consistency has propped up relatively slender haul of 3 GP wins. Both riders have 6 sprint wins between them in 2024, while Martin has taken 13 podiums on Saturdays. Banyaya's 8 wins on a Sunday is a stunning mark relative to 3 for Martin, but both are level on 13 podiums in total each. Martin has had 4 non-scores in 2024, albeit two have come while leading Grands Prix in a third when he was leading the sprint in Indonesia. Unforced errors or Alex Marquez's fault? After finishing a distant third at the Australian GP, 
Fanyaya commented on the up and down nature of his championship and highlighted his Aragon tangle with Alex Marquez as being the incident that is hanging heavy over his tilt right now. We are continuing recovering, losing, recovering, losing. Our performance is fairly balanced, he said. Unluckily the contact that made me crash with Alex Marquez is the fact that is right now weighing more on the championship. That incident came as the pair were debating third place, with Banyaya the quicker of the two and with time enough left to get a move safely done. That was 16 points that went missing that day, while Martin was able to swell his championship lead from 3 points after the sprint to 23. Had Banyaya finished in third, the gap between them would have been 7. Certainly, it was a costly tangle. But is it really the incident holding Banyaya back? Just two rounds later Banyaya would suffer another non-score. Having won the Emilia-Romagna GP sprint to reduce Martin's lead to four points, he crashed while trying to make up ground in third after an odd tire issue dropped him out of the victory fight in the first half of the Grand Prix. Had he just banked third place, Banyaya would have left Mizano eight points behind Martin instead of 24. At Indonesia, with Martin only scoring 25 points for his Grand Prix win and Banyaya taking 28 for the weekend, the gap between them would be just 5. And after a clean sweep in Japan, with Martin scoring 26, Banyaya would take a 6-point lead in the standings. With Martin outscoring Banyaya by 10 points in Indonesia, he'd retake the lead in the championship by only by 4 points instead of 20. If you add the, at minimum, 6 points Banyaya lost when he crashed out of 3rd in the Silverstone sprint and the 12 that went walking when he fell from the lead of the Barcelona sprint, you then have a championship advantage of 14 for the Italian. The Alex Marquez collision at Aragon proved contentious at the time, with Banyaya initially saying the Grazzini rider deliberately crashed with him. The world champion later backtracked on this and apologized for his words. And while there is no doubt that the points lost there have had an effect on his championship hopes, it's not the incident that has done the most damage to his points situation. Unfortunately for Banyaya, the most costly non-scores have come by his own hand and that is something he now had to quickly come to terms with in order to reverse the momentum Martin has taken in the title race. Honda will reportedly bring in Castrol when they split from Repsol next season. Motorsport report that Honda are nearing the significant sponsorship deal. Castrol will not be a title sponsor in 2025, however. Castrol, a British oil company, is already a partner of the LCR Honda MotoGP team. This alliance will remain into 2025. Honda will lose Repsol, a Spanish oil company, as their title sponsor at the end of this season. It will bring a 30-year partnership to an end, and signal the end of an incredible period of success. Repsol and Honda were synonymous with the manufacturer's best days in MotoGP, particularly Marc Marquez's championships. Together, Repsol and Honda won 15 riders' titles. But when Marquez quit Honda a year ago, Repsol's commitment to sponsoring the manufacturer decreased. This season, the MotoGP team are running with Repsol's presence decreased on their bikes. Their split has long since been confirmed but the introduction of Castrol in 2025 would be a major step in a new direction for Honda's factory team. Their riders next season will again be Joan Mir and Luca Marini. New technical director Romano Albiziano and test rider Alex Aspargaro will arrive to aid the struggling project. <laughs>